good evening as we begin another Nightline. We believe tonight that there's something in this program that is going to appeal to a lot of different interests. We have uh, music tonight. We have ministry of the Word tonight. But I want to go on record as saying that we are intentionally trying to clean up our act here at TV16 by bringing on a soap specialist. Did you catch that? Probably a weak, dead joke. But we're going to go in the direction of homemade soap tonight. We believe that that is going to be interesting. And uh, you do not have to wait. You do not have to hesitate to see all that's involved in this really old, old art. We're honored this evening to have with us from Horse O Peace Ministries and or business. If you're a believer, even your business is a ministry. Every part of your life is a platform to honor and glorify the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. All the way from Winston-Salem, North Carolina, we're happy and thrilled to welcome to Nightline tonight, Elizabeth Sanders. How are you? I'm good. Thank you good. for having me. Excellent. Well, it's a joy to have you, and I really and truly look forward to, uh, to the, the soap, the soap. Did, did, did you catch my joke? <laughs> did you catch my joke about us cleaning up our act? Yes, I did. Okay. That's right. Yeah, pretty bad. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, it's no joke what you guys are doing. I shared with you right before the program started, um, I, I was privileged to have some samples, and we've been using some of these samples around the house, and and uh, they, have, they have passed the test of my wife. Well, thank you. I'm glad to hear that. Yep, yep, absolutely. And uh, she was very, very pleased with that. Before we get deep into the soap, where did you get the name? Horse O Peace. That happens to be from Wisconsin, where I'm, I grew up uh, partly through my teen years and my early 20s. Yeah. The farmers out there had a saying that it was a horse apiece to get into town. So town was just a short ways away. You could literally ride your horse. So when my family had a hobby farm there where I originally started making the soaps, my dad named our farm Horse O Peace Ranch because we had the horses. So that's how the name became the name of my business. I love it. I love it. What is your, your church background? I grew up in fundamental independent Baptist churches primarily when I was growing up. And then it wasn't until I was about 16 years old that my family had some really hard times. And so I was seeking a deeper relationship with God. And I had been learning about God through all my growing up years. You know, sure. Through the Baptist churches, but I was thinking that if I could get closer to God, I was going to do my best to try. Right. So for the next eight years, I started wearing a head covering. I started making my own clothes. I started um, associating myself with people who were part of a plain church, such as Amish, Mennonite. Mm -hmm. um, there were charity groups. There were um, Dunkard Brethren, German Baptist. All of those are called the plain people. And so I P -L -A -I -N. wanted... P-L-A-I-N. P-L-A-I-N, yes, okay. plain people. And so I thought those people exemplified godliness. They were forsaking the world and that they were getting somehow closer to God than I was. Right. Mm -hmm. But according to what, what I think I'm hearing, you had already accepted Jesus Christ. I had early, as a early child. Yeah. As a child, I had put my, my faith in Jesus Christ and been baptized and became members um, of the, the Baptist churches that right. we attended. But it wasn't until I went through the hardships in my teen years that I, I was trying to find God in my own way. And basically, those eight years showed me that as much as I was pursuing God, He had already been pursuing me. And I just hadn't seen it until eight years into that. I had to learn for myself that it was personal. He wanted a personal relationship with me. So at the age of 24 is when I actually had a transformation in my life. Well, amen. Yes. Amen. I want to ask you this, Elizabeth. 
do you think there's a difference between separation and, and, and of course the Bible teaches separation. Come out mm -hmm. from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. Mm -hmm. But do you think there's a difference between separation and isolation? <laughs> well, there's a little bit of a difference, I believe. You know, the separation that I felt from God during those years, I, it was more of a perceived thing because I know that while my sin definitely gave me isolation from him, I was only separated really from him because he was there. He was pursuing me. I was his. And he showed me where, the, where a little bit of that difference was. And so I had to find out during those years that it, it took me to realize through some very loving people in those plain churches, I found people who loved God, right. who were there because they just deeply loved God. It wasn't just about the lifestyle. Others, people, it was just about the lifestyle. So definitely for me, I had to experience both isolation from God and the separation from God to know the difference. Was this an experiment or a, a journey that your entire family was involved in or just yourself? It was primarily just myself. My mother had started to wear a head covering um, when I was 15 and at the time I thought well my mother does some strange things you know <laughs> but um, she she had a different kind of relationship with God at least it seemed like that to me like she she definitely wanted to have a very outward expression of God in her life. Sure. And so it wasn't until that I wanted to show that I wanted to be submissive to God. I wanted to be submissive to my parents living at home at the time. That's when I started to wear a head covering myself. And so we didn't grow up that way. It was a choice that was made later in life. So at the age of 16, when most teenagers are starting to get into finding out what life is about, I was trying to take a, a backtrack in my life to, to find how to get back to the basics of life. Tell me about being 24 years old. <laughs> what happened then? What, what led up to that? I actually, when I was 24 years old, I came to the conclusion one day that I was wearing a head covering. I saw a picture of myself. I didn't even look like a woman anymore because um, in certain churches you have to pull your hair straight back. You can't wear any jewelry. And I didn't have any and he looked to me anymore that was a woman. And I came across Ezekiel 16 when God took Israel as an infant in her own pool of blood. And he pulled her out and he dressed her in fine clothes and he put earrings and jewelry on her body so that the other nations noticed her mm -hmm. and saw that this was something that was of God. And he made her beautiful. And I thought, if God could do this for Israel, then why am I subjecting myself to all these things that he didn't put in my right. life? I was putting this on my own life. So at the age of 24, I actually said, if this is what it takes to be a Christian, I don't want to be a Christian anymore. Right. So I had been serving him for 17 and a half years, and I just said, that's it. So I had enough godly knowledge right. to know that I didn't want to go into a life of sin. Right. But at the same time, I just hadn't had the connection. So at 24 is when it was literally that day that God turned me around and just said, now I have a clean slate to work with. Now I can input myself into you because you've reached the end of yourself. You know you can't do it anymore. Amen. And so for me, it became a very personal thing. And it's interesting because even just a few weeks ago, I experienced again that personal relationship with God. I was dropping some packages off because at the end of my week, every Friday, I have to get packages out with Horse of Peace Ranch. And sure. So I had my four boys with me. I was very tired. And I was just asking the Lord, and I said, please, I know this, this drop-off place only has a certain number of parking spaces in front of it. If I don't get a parking space there, I have to walk with the boys across a busy street. And I was just tired. I was at the end of my week. And so I said, Lord, if you can just, I, sh I know you love me, and this is a small thing, but if you can just show me, if you can make a parking spot be available, I would be so happy. And to some people, that'd be such a petty thing. You wouldn't even think of asking God for it. But God asks us to ask him for things sure and to does. receive from him. Sure he does. And so what I thought was funny is I had three cars ahead of me. The first car went past the parking spot. The second car came up to it and passed the parking spot. And I thought, I thought surely that third car is going to go into that parking spot. And it didn't. And when I started pulling into the parking spot, I realized there wasn't only one parking spot. There were two parking spots. Hmm. And it was one of those things that was a time in my life where I didn't need God to show me and prove to me anything about his love for me. I already right. knew it was there. Right. 
But it was something that he reminded me that he's very personal, he's very interested in me, and, and it was one of those things that he said, hey, you need a parking spot, I got this for you, but not only am I going to give you one parking spot, I'm going to give you two, because you're my daughter and I love you and I'm going to provide for you. Amen. And I just came away just so happy because God had done this for me. And so that's the thing that I was missing before I was 24. I didn't have that personal relationship with God where I was, I was reading my Bible, I was praying, I was living my life as a Christian, but it was all me. I could not point up to God and say, this is you. So that was the biggest difference that changed in me when I was 24. And so from there, it's just, you know, a day by day, obviously growing in Christ. Sure. And just realizing that I have these moments in my daily life where God just inputs and says, I'm here. I'm taking care of you. You're my daughter and I love you. You said earlier, Elizabeth, when we come to the end of ourself, when, when we cease trying and just start trusting, Mm -hmm. makes all the difference in the world. Mm -hmm. This business, horseapiece.com, did that start after you were 24? Has this been a recent thing? It started the same year. It was one of those Seriously. things that I wanted to have a business from home. My parents did not want me to attend college. They did not want me to get a job. They wanted me to be mission-based or at least have a life focused on being a wife and a mother. Still in Wisconsin. Still in Wisconsin, yes. So I would spend my time hiring out to farmers, milking cows. I would bake things. I would train horses. So I had a lifestyle where I, did, I was trained to do many different you things. You were a farm girl. <laughs> I was a farm girl. Yeah. Fully through and through. Yeah. But my sister had goats in our household, and so she took those goats, and she would milk them, and we'd have excess milk. So I said, hey, I want to try making soap just one time. Let me just make soap one time, and I just want to know if I can do it. And so I actually started making soap, and from the first batch, I had people asking if they could buy it. I had a lady ask if she could stock it in a store. I, it was just one of those things that it was a business that started rolling without me trying to turn it into a business. But it happened that same year that God just inputted himself into my life in such you know, magnificent and wonderful ways that it was something with the business that as I'd have customers come, they would talk about the business a little bit, and I'd be so excited to share what God was doing personally in my yeah. life that it was like this time of just opening up. It was opening up for who I was as an adult woman, you know, starting this business, but also just who I was in Christ and finding that position and being able to use the places that I was selling the soap at to be able to talk freely to people. So would it be accurate in saying as you were pursuing Christ, mm -hmm. And I'm going, to, I'm going to use the, the P word here. A lot, of, a lot of people take it from one extreme to the other. And the P word's prosperity. Mm. We, we find an imbalance on, on either extreme. Some people, they preach the gospel of prosperity. It's the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's not a prosperity gospel. There's, there's no such thing. And then some think that if you're a Christian, you, you're never going to prosper. You're not supposed to pro prosper. But God prospered you. God blessed you in a great way. And when we come back from the next song, I want you to talk about the one thing that you're most thankful for right now. Right now. <laughs> and I know you've got a lot of things. <laughs> but the one thing that you're most thankful for right now that God's doing through horse o peace. Horse o peace. Before this program is over, I'm going to be able to say that just so comfortably. <laughs> But I'm working on it right now. Horse O Peace. We're going to talk about that some more. We're having a great time hearing from, learning about, and even getting to know our sister in Christ, Elizabeth Sanders, from Horse O Peace Business.com. This business that you more or less just walked into mm -hmm. being compelled by the desire of your heart to just to just try to make some soap. Yes. Through goat's milk. That's right, yes. Has in an incredible way just experienced the blessing from God's hand being all over it. It's probably not fair to ask you what one thing, but what's the first thing that comes to your mind that you're thankful for that this business has done? And, and I think it's the neatest thing in the world 
because God does have preachers and apostles and prophets and evangelists and missionaries mm -hmm. and et cetera, et cetera. As a, as a friend of mine up in the country would say, full-time God employees. But, but you can be used of God in your, in your own sphere. What are, you, what are you thankful for about that? I am very thankful that through our business, we are able to make sure that I, number one, am available and home to my family. It's something that's very important to yeah. be able to have my young children where I don't have to leave our home to be able to have the business going. But because of, like you say, God's blessing on our business, um, we are looking forward to being able to have my husband join me to work fully from home one day, one day soon, hopefully by the end of the year actually. And that's something that is very important to be as, to us because our children, they see daddy go off to work every day. And we all love, <laughs> we all love our, my husband. And, and so it's a hard thing for the children when they see daddy go off to work. And it's at times they'll, they'll see him when he comes home and just say, hey daddy, were you at your other house? Or you know, they'll say, do you have another family? Or, or something like that. So for us, it's one of those things that they don't understand why dad disappears for a couple of hours. So my thankfulness is just in that we are seeing this business grow with God's blessing on it to the point where it's getting beyond what I can handle at home with our four boys and also I'm a home educating mother as well so we have the school part of our day and then having my husband we he comes home and we work for a couple of hours every day and then we all get to start over and do it <laughs> again the next day so yes did you ever ever dream that one day you would back back during those days with all due love and respect when when you were going through that phase of of, of trying to, to, through human effort, mm. become what the Christ life, only the Christ life can, right. can make you. Mm -hmm. Did you ever dream that you'd be in a house full of guys <laughs> and love it, <laughs> and love it? I did not, actually. That's one of those things that the marriage that God has given me with my husband has far exceeded my expectations. I thought, oh, yeah, you know, I'll marry some nice guy, and, you know, we'll have this nice little happy life. But the life that he's given us has far exceeded, and partly that's because in my husband, I also see that he's in Christ. You know, he's he has his own mistakes and failures, just as I do, but that, that Christ-likeness that comes through our marriage. Yeah. You know, we might have something hard that comes up or something that we disagree on, but we come out better on the other side of it. It's hard in the moment, you know, but sure. one thing that we see is that we have a very transparent relationship. He can say to me, hey, what are you thinking about? It could be off the wall, just completely, yeah. you know, something weird. And, I'll, and, you know, women, we have this kind of spaghetti brain where everything, you know, is mixed up. So he laughs at me once in a while for that. But because of that transparency, you know, in our marriage, that also carries through to the business side with horseofpeace.com because that transparency is what we also want to show people is that while we don't have the religious side mentioned very much on our website with the, the business, we know that Christ is in our business. The way we ha make transactions, the way we interact with our customers, it all comes from that side of the way that our marriage works and the way that our marriage works is because of being in Christ. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I, I personally do not think that there is a substitute for just walking the walk. Mm -hmm. Talk the talk every time God gives mm -hmm. us the opportunity to do so. But if, if all we're doing is talking the talk and not walking the walk, uh, we, we displease the Lord. That's very, very true. You know, I found it very interesting that during the eight years when I was pursuing God through my own efforts, wearing mm -hmm. the head covering, associating mm -hmm. myself with people from the plain churches such as the Amish, the Dunker Brethren, German Baptists, those sure. kind of groups, I never once had anybody ask me about my faith. Never once. It wasn't until I took off the head covering as God was working on my heart and he said, you don't need this to stand to pray to me because they believe that if a woman wears a head covering, you cannot pray to God unless you're wearing it. Right. Otherwise, you would dishonor your head. So when I took off the head covering and was still praying to God, it says there was only one man who was the mediator between God and man, yeah. and that's the man Christ Jesus. So when I realized that as God was just instructing me through different people, you know, that he used in my life and teaching me about him, and I started to pray to him, even without a head covering, I started to have people coming up to me and asking me, why are you doing this? Why is the head covering not on you anymore? Why are you changing? Like, we see changes in you. Tell me about them. And it opened the doors for people to see 
how those changes were being made and how I was being different. Well, then, when I married my husband, I moved south to the Bible Belt. So I was still wearing skirts and dresses all the time. And one day I decided to wear a pair of pants, you know, or women's slacks or whatnot. Sure. And my neighbors started to come and talk to me because all of a sudden it was like they saw me as approachable and as being real. And, and they said, okay, we see that you're different. You, you know, you dress modestly. You're different than us. You're happy all the time. What is that that's in you that we see? And so it was something that um, I noticed that as I let God... Um, work in my heart and become who he had me to be. He gave me those opportunities to come and open up and learn from, you know, those people in my, that were coming to my life, but also to be able to be used by him. And so with the business that just flowed into, you know, being able to go to a farmer's market, being able to go yep. to a different show and people would see me or, you know, my husband with me and they'd talk to us and they'd they'd see that we were different, so they'd be drawn over to us and we'd get to talking with them and the doors would open up, you know, so we've we've been very blessed. <laughs> And I know you have, and, and that's very obvious. And I appreciate your spirit, and I appreciate your transparency. The Lord has called us to be different. Mm -hmm. And unless we are different, we're really not going to make a difference. I'm, I'm convicted of that. But there's a difference between being different for Jesus and just being plain an old weird Yes. <laughs> and just freaking people out, and they're scared to death of us. Mm -hmm. We're not a cult. In fact, Christianity is not even a religion. Right. It's a way of life, and that way of life is found only through the Lord Jesus Christ. Elizabeth, there are many so-called uh, natural soaps, and a lot of them have color in, in their bars, but yours are, are tan to brown. And uh, if, if I may say so, and, I, and I'm not bragging, but, but, I'm, but I'm proud of the fact that, that I, I have become quite the soap expert since they gave me your samples. <laughs> and, th and that's Good. about the extent of it. Thank you. Why the, the difference in, in your colors and, and a lot of the others? With our soaps, we have all natural ingredients. So that started with using the raw goat milk that my sister had. And then when I started making soaps, I noticed that a lot of people use, like you said, they have different colors. You, yeah. can, you can even have some that are natural based. But when I look at a soap, I like to touch it. I like to smell it. I like to, you know, turn it all over my hands to see the full thing. And I would read labels and see what the ingredients were. And I wanted to know that what I was using on my body was natural. But when I make the soaps, we have people that come to us who want to have the same desire that I had, all natural ingredients, but when they see the soaps and they see nothing added to it, then they, they have a better idea of understanding, this is a natural soap. I mean, they didn't use either natural or unnatural colorants. Yeah. It sets us a little bit apart with other soap making companies. And so between that, and we use 100% raw goat milk. So there's no water. You, no I was water ask you, in how, uh, what, is, what is the advantage of goat milk? Goat milk. Is I'll never look at those goats in the pasture beside our church office again That's right. the same. I'll That's never right. look at them the same. Tell me. They are very valuable animals. Okay. But most people won't see that. We see it as that simply because of the, the milk that they give. But yeah. goat's milk has a lot of vitamins in it. Vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin C, vitamin B2. It also has minerals. So those things are retained in raw goat milk. When it gets pasteurized, um, it, those things won't be in the milk. And so when I started making soap, I would pasteurize the milk and use some water. It was a nice bar of soap. But then when I decided, hey, what happens if I just use raw milk? I changed the process a little bit because you have to keep the temperatures very low to make sure the milk is raw. Mm -hmm. But that 100% raw milk made such a difference. My skin was, has never been dry since. So hmm. being from Wisconsin, milking goats, having 20 below zero weather during the wintertime, going out to feed my horses, you know, that kind of thing, my hands would crack and bleed. And so when I started making the soap using absolutely no water in the recipe, I didn't pasteurize the milk. It was raw. It made such a difference in the soap. I never looked back. No chemicals? No chemicals. No yes. chemicals. Whatsoever. No chemical fragrances. We use plant-based fragrances if the soaps have a smell. So that comes from essential oils. So you'll smell different plants, lavender, peppermint, that kind of thing. Okay. Okay. For, for many, many years, my, my primary role coming to TV16 is to tell people that with Christ there is hope. Mm -hmm. But tonight, you're going to get me out of my comfort zone. <laughs> yes. And I'm not going to quit telling people that with Christ and in Christ there is hope. 
But you're going to have me making some soap. That's right. Is that right? That's and right. I, and I, I didn't know this you're for, until, me. until I walked. I'm, I'm going to do the best I can to help you. I'm going to take my coat off. I guess I, I see you've got some gloves yep. for me. But anyway, this is going to be fun. It's going to be very, very different. And uh, I, want to, I want to learn more before this program is over about this new pet care. Yes. I, love, I love pets. And I want to find out about healthy pets and some of those, those new things that God's doing. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I tried to give you plenty of fair warning. I am going to learn what it's like to make soap. Elizabeth Sanders <laughs> from Horse O Peace, originally from Wisconsin. That's right. But now... Here in the promised land, <laughs> yes. the holy land, the Bible Belt, South Carolina, North Carolina, Georgia, you uh, are going to teach us the process. That's right. So we've already put aprons on to protect our clothes. Exactly. I'm going to wear a set of gloves because I'm going to be working with the ingredients here. Okay. You have glasses on, so I'm going to add some goggles. A little bit of eye protection doesn't hurt. When you make soap, you need oils or fats. These are all vegetable-based oils. We have our raw goat milk that we're going to be using here. This is sodium hydroxide. That's what turns these things into soap. That's why we have the protection on. Okay. And then this is vinegar. If you ever got the sodium hydroxide splashed on you, you just put a little vinegar on. It'll neutralize it. And then we have some vitamin E that gives a little bit of a natural preservative to the soap. Okay. So when you make soap, you also normally would have a scale so you could weigh out your ingredients, a thermometer to watch your temperatures, and a stick blender to mix them. This is so, serious business. This is serious business. <laughs> you need business. to have a few, a few different things. But what we're going to do first okay. is we're going to pour some milk into our container here. And I've done this just a few times, so I'm not going to weigh it out. I know what I need here. Okay. And then next I'm going to pour our sodium hydroxide into our milk. I want you to give that just a little bit of a stir. You're going to actually see it change color slightly. Uh, I've, I've come a long way from, from stirring hamburger helper at home to now. <laughs> now I'm stirring soap, okay? That's right, that's right. Okay, now you see how it changed colors just slightly? Yeah, it really did. And changed the consistency a little bit. Now we're going to take this, we're going to dump it into our oils, which I have taken the time to melt so we don't have them in the solid form, such as the oils over there. And you can see that the, li the mixtures of the two liquids have started to thicken right. a little bit. So after just a little bit more stirring, what we would get is this. This is okay. soap. Now, you can see here the mixture has thickened quite a bit. Now, if you want to give that a stir, okay. we're going to finish up our soap by adding some good oatmeal to this. Anybody at home making soap usually starts out with oatmeal and honey. So that is our number one top selling soap at horsepeace.com. Okay. So we have our oatmeal in there. We have a little bit of honey that you're just going to stir in. What what kind of there honey is go. that? Is is that is that the kind of honey? That is raw honey, the okay. best you can find. If you can find someone that doesn't pasteurize their honey and use it, okay. it will give you some good skin properties, help keep that moisture locked into your skin. Well, that's what I'm after, good skin <laughs> properties. That's right. So once you have your soap all mixed with your ingredients, okay. you just make sure you have a nice clean container. This is just a nice cheap little container that we're going to pour it into. All right. All right. So after it gets all poured in, you want to cover your soap for 24 hours. After okay. 24 hours, you can take that lid off. And within another 24 hours after that, you can cut it. Your soap, at that point, will be hard, such as this block here. And you're going to get a nice, solid block of soap. That's the oatmeal and honey you can see. You feel how firm that is? Yeah, for sure. That's right. So then you could just take a nice, straight edge cutter, and you just put it into your block of soap any size you want. And you can make nice cuts through that. You stick it on the shelf. Okay for about four weeks to six weeks. And what you will have in the end, you can see how the soap has a little Just bit of different colors. Room temperature. 
in four to six weeks, you get a bar that you can use, that you can wash with. So this is our oatmeal and honey soap. You can see that there. It's the same as this, but it will, it will turn out to be very even okay. when it cures, and it will be ready to use, very gentle on your skin, good for any skin type. Excellent. Thanks. Well, I'll, I'll tell you, so far in, in what you're teaching me, I, mm -hmm. I do not feel all washed up. <laughs> I really, really and truly do not. How much do you involve your children in, in this process? Do they help you? They like to help with certain aspects, such as putting the labels on. I don't let them near this, yeah. you know, because yeah. uh, the, chemicals <laughs> the chemical of the sodium hydroxide, that's the only chemical that's in there because you have to turn it into soap. But other than that, they like to help with the labels, like to help me ship out the boxes. They like to help package. They're a very big help. Well, I say help. In a, yeah. in a <laughs> as much help as a 5, 4, 3, and 20-month-old can be, but yes. Absolutely, yes. absolutely. Where do you get, get your goat's milk? We currently buy our goat's milk from different farmers in the area. We're in a transition phase because of the growth of our business where the goats we had could not keep up with the supply that we needed. So we started to get our goat milk from other farmers that we found were dumping their milk. Okay, excellent. Mm -hmm. As far as the orders that you're receiving right now, where, where are some of the places? Are, are they all local or, or all over the country? We have all over the U.S. Every single state we've shipped to, we ship also internationally. So we get orders. Anyone who, who asks about a wholesale order or even just a, a small purchase order that we'll get from just, you know, anybody who inquires, we will sell soap to. So we also have soap on Amazon. So that's another place that people find us. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I think that we have the website over here, the web address and, and all of that, horseopeace.com. Tell me very quickly before we go back to another song about the, the pets, the, the healthy pet. We had so, so many people asking about our soaps, knowing they were natural, and asking, can I use this on my pets? The thing is, is that while we don't test on animals, we would tell people there, there are all natural ingredients in there. So if you wanted to use it at the risk of, you know, using it on your own pet, go ahead. So they did, and we had customers coming back and telling us, wow, this soap not only helped their skin conditions, it helped their fur, it helped ticks and fleas fall off of them. Oh, yeah. So it, it helped their pets be healthier. So that's where we got the name of our Healthy Pets line was because of those kind comments from the customers that we had. So we launched that just a couple months ago, and so our customers have been buying up those bars as well. Excellent. Well, thank you yes. so much for, for sharing this and, and for showing this. Thank you. Would you hang around just a few more minutes, and we'll close out this hour of That's Nightline. That's right, yes. We've had a great time, and God is not against us having a great time. He's really not. He's not against us having fun. But he wants us to know him, and that's what you've talked about in your own journey, and, and you're continuing to know him better, mm -hmm. but also through life and, and doing life and living life, he wants us to also make him known. Would you just say a word about how folks can reach you? There's the telephone number. Okay if anybody calls? That's right. Give me a call. I love to talk to people. I love to hear from our customers or if somebody just wants to say hi, you know, tell me a little bit about your family. How are the boys doing? We like to talk. Good deal. Well, you, your husband Nick is here. Yes, he is. And in just a few moments, Nick is going to be on. And this is the part I'm really excited about because I, I, I love little boys. <laughs> Had the privilege of raising three had the privilege of having lunch with one of them here in town today who's, who's a grown man doing really well. And I'm really, really proud of my sons. Really grateful for God's faithfulness in their life and their faithfulness to God. But I want to meet your sons. I want to meet these young guys. <laughs> yes. And we're going to have them on here in just a few moments. This is live television. And uh, you, you throw, in, throw in some children, there's just no telling That's what's right. going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> Nick and Elizabeth, would you like to introduce your four fabulous fellas? Sure, I guess we can go by age. Our oldest here is Shiloh, who's looking the other direction right now with his car. Hey, Shiloh. black shirt. <laughs> Shiloh, say hi. Hi. How are you? <laughs> Great. <laughs> great. You're doing great. 
And then we've got Jude right here. He's four, and uh, and uh, looks like me. Hi. And uh, <laughs> hi, hi. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and Eli, he's three. Hi. Hello, bashful one. <laughs> yeah. And then Joel is our youngest at about 20 months, and uh, and just about our happiest kid we've got. <laughs> well, I can I can tell that. Uh, I'm just going to ask this. You you can you can say none of you, none of your business. Will will there be will there be another one? Will there be a girl? Will there be another boy? Or 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 is this alpha and omega? <laughs> this is the beginning and the end, this definitely. Is, <laughs> this, this is for his mama's sanity level. Yeah. Yes. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. Well, there, there is nothing wrong with that. Many, many years ago, uh, after we had had our third son, and uh, we were in the diaper bag stage, uh, a dear, dear, wonderful Christian friend of ours, good man of God, came up to my wife and said, uh, you do know you're supposed to have your quiver full. <laughs> my wife turned around and she said, I'll have you to know our quiver just has three seats in it. So, a very small quiver. Yeah, yeah, very small quiver, but that's okay. That's okay. Where do you see, Nick, your family? And, and when I ask you this, you're probably going to say, 10 years, I'm, I'm working on 10 minutes. You, you, you have several in a hold here. Yeah. <laughs> Where do you see your family, by the grace of God, in 10 years? Oh, my goodness. Uh, I, I hope to see us definitely uh, together full time and, uh, and working uh, off of our own property. And uh, we, we just purchased property not too long ago and uh, got my parents living on there as well right now. And my sister's getting ready to finish building a house on uh, the property adjacent to ours. And uh, so I'd love to see our family all together and just uh, worshiping together and living life together and running our business together. Just a lot of together. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I want to say you are off to a really good start on being together. <laughs> We're definitely you really, together. really hard. Y'all, y'all, y'all have got it going on as much as anybody I know being mm -hmm. being together. Mom, what what's a greater challenge, raising sons or making soap? <laughs> raising the boys. They keep me very busy. They love to be around everything when I'm making soap. Well, not the making soap, as we talked about with some of the, the ingredients, but we do love to have them around, being a part of the family, being a part of the business. So raising them, though, is our top priority. It comes definitely before the soap. I know <laughs> They're it both does. important, but mm -hmm. they're the most important. I know it does. Uh, Shallow, would you, would you like to come around here and talk to me? Come around here. Just, just come around here. Yeah, just come over here. I, I, I've been needing help hosting this program. Is there anything that you want to talk about? Anything in particular? What you been doing today? Jelly cakes. Do what? Jelly bread cakes. Jelly bread cakes. Jelly bread cakes. He's, what is a jelly bread cake? He is cake? Chef Shiloh. I make that. You put jelly on bread, then jelly on then put browns. I do jelly on bread, then bread on jelly. Bread on jelly and jelly on bread and bread on jelly. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Do you, do you love jelly? Yeah. Do, what do you love? What do you love the most about jelly? Um, I like to make the cake out of it. You like to make a cake of it. Good deal. <laughs> well, what about your brothers? Have are are they pretty good boys? Yeah, she knows how to do it because I teach them. This yeah, you teach them. Well, I'm telling you what, you you have every ingredient of a firstborn son. You've got it going on. Uh, out of out of all your brothers, who 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 do you teach the best? Jude. Jude. Good deal. Jude's Jude's kind of in the middle of of the mix there, isn't he? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's our second. He sure is. Mm -hmm. He sure is. And and I've got a feeling if if we go much longer, uh, Joel is going to remodel our our whole <laughs> the set. Whole place, yeah. I, I believe he is. <laughs> you will not recognize Nightline tomorrow night. Right on, Joel. <laughs> well, Joel, I want to I want to ask you this. Would you come here? Wanna he come says, up? "You want to come up here? Can I come up? You want to come up here?" No. Okay, I have such a wonderful way with children. I just, I just terrify them, but that's not my intent. 
-hmm. Let me ask you this. Suppose tonight there's a young lady, and, mm -hmm. I, and I've been thinking this the entire program, and I want you to just stay here and help me. Okay, okay good deal. You, you're pretty good at this. You really are. There's a young lady watching this program, and she dreams of being a wife, she dreams of, of being a mother. I don't know. She may even dream about making soap. But she dreams about, about making a home, making mm -hmm. a family. But uh, right now, she just really wonders, is there anybody out there for me? Would you, if she were just sitting right here, what would you say to her? I would say, first of all, make God your one and only. If you do not know that God is your one and only, you are not going to have a man come into your life and make him your one and only. You have to know, first of whether, you know, if you have that position with God, then yes. <laughs> there is definitely, you know, a man that God might have prepared, and if not, then you know that God is, he will fulfill your deepest needs, your deepest desires. Because it, it's really impossible for a man or a woman, for that matter, to meet all of your needs. It's that's not right. fair. Only, only Jesus yeah. can that's do right. that. Mm -hmm. Only Jesus can do that. Well, I just want to thank you guys so very, very much for taking the time out of your schedule to be a part of Nightline. <laughs> Welcome back to the last few minutes of Nightline. Elizabeth, I've just got to ask you this question. In... Uh, our earlier conversations, you were talking about uh, being involved in, in the plain people life, that tradition wherein mostly men are in charge. Men are in charge. How or even did it become an issue when you being obviously a, a woman become an entrepreneur who ran and, and built a family company, was that frowned upon or blessed or ignored or what? Had I continued in the plain church, it definitely would have become an issue. Um, but being that it was at a time in my life where God was bringing me out of that, um, at the same time that the business was started, it was something that it was totally God leading. You know, he was leading me away from the plain church and into the business and the life that he had for me. So it definitely would have been a problem because uh, as, as the men like to be able to be the, the breadwinners in the homes and they also like to provide for their families, they don't really look upon the women having an entrepreneurial kind of business. So it, it was one of those things that definitely, it was a God-led thing for, for yeah. the, the beginning of the business. And yeah. it's been God all the way through it. Yeah. And I, and I would have to agree with you. And, and, and we're not here to argue or, or challenge anybody or disrespect anybody. But the fact of the matter is that virtuous woman in Proverbs 31, she, she was a businesswoman, mm -hmm. obviously. Mm -hmm. Lydia mm -hmm. in Acts 16, seller of purple, yes. she was right. also a businesswoman. Yep. So what's, what's the best way to to stay in touch with, with your core values at the same time that, that you're building this business? Definitely for me, staying in touch, I mean, has, it's been something that since it's God-led, it's one of those things that as God is teaching me about transparency and about truthfulness and honesty, it goes into our business with horsepeace.com because we have um, ingredients lists that are full um, where people can read every ingredient. There's no hidden ingredients. You know, when we deal mm. with the customer, we have our values that we stand by, being trustworthy with them, making, you know, being at peace with all men is our goal. And so those things that still were something, you know, in the plain church that I learned about the simplicity of life, they definitely carried into horsepeace.com. Excellent, excellent. So uh, you, you obviously have been influenced and impressed by many in the Christian tradition and by many in the body of Christ. Yes. And uh, I just want to encourage you to keep on doing that with your own sons and with your own family and your own future. I personally pray that the Lord will bless you. Thank you. And keep you, and that he'll make his face smile upon you and shine upon you and he'll give you peace all of your days. And I want to thank you for being a part of this Nightline program as well. 
I love to hear everybody's story. Everybody has a different story, whether, whether it's somebody here on Nightline or, or not. I just love to meet people. I love to listen to people. But there is a, there is a story that matters to me more than life itself. And it's the story of God loving the world so much that He gave His Son Jesus to die on the cross in our place for our sins, to be buried, and then to be raised again. Jesus Christ is coming back. I pray tonight in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Son of God, that you are ready for His return. Our Father, I pray just a simple prayer of thanksgiving tonight for the way you have allowed us to sit down and share and listen and learn to some of the most transparent, some of the most real people that I've been around in a long, long time. I pray, Lord, they'd just keep that honesty and that sincerity and never stoop so low as to be distracted to the point that they feel like they've got to please people and they've got to fear man. I pray that they would always fear God and love each other. And I pray, Jesus, that you'd keep me near the cross of Calvary. For it's in Christ's name that I pray. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much for Thank this you. evening. Thank and you. I appreciate it. I wish you the best. And I wish you the best as well. God bless you. Good night from everybody here at Nightline.